Hello everyone, my name is Zara Qasemi. I'm so excited to continue talking about chapter 5 membrane. This is part 2. Uh, make sure to watch part 1 first. The link is provided in the description. We will go over dialysis. We will find out what is osmosis. And then we will learn about osmosis in animal and plant cells. So let's start. We have learned about diffusion in the previous video and the solute diffusion across the membrane is called dialysis. On the other hand, osmosis is the solvent diffusion across the membrane. In most living organisms, water is the solvent. So we can say osmosis in living organisms is the movement of the water molecule across the selectively permeable uh, membrane. For example, in this uh, slide, you see the U-shaped tube that it has two parts. These two parts are separated by semi-permeable membrane. As you see here, it has a specific pores that allows water molecules to pass through the membrane. On the other hand, solute in this example is sucrose. As you see here, it has a bigger size and cannot pass through this membrane. We have 100% water because it has a pure water. In that area B side, we have 2% sucrose. That means we have 98% water. I hope you can remember from part one video that I talk about diffusion, that molecules want to move from high concentration to the region that has lower concentration. In this example, the water molecule is the polar and solute that is sucrose also is the polar molecule. Some of these water molecules are gathering around these polar solutes. As a result, at B side, you will have less free water molecules. So, water molecules move more to the B side. As you see here, the level of the solution has been increased in the B side due to osmosis. Tonicity is when an extracellular solution makes water move into or out of a cell by osmosis is known as tonicity. For understanding tonicity, you need to learn it in examples. For example, red blood cells are immersed in these three beaker solutions with different NACL or solute concentrations. So I will discuss this one in detail. But keep in mind that tonicity is comparison. I want to introduce you to these three terms. An isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. If you dissect this term, isotonic is equal. You have the same concentration of the solute in both sides. The hypo means low. The area that you are talking, it has less solute concentration. And the hypertonic means is high. It has more solute concentration. I also uh, discussed this one in uh, part one, that acroporins, transmembrane proteins that facilitate the movement of the water across the plasma membrane. In other words, we can say uh, they facilitate osmosis. So, let's answer this question. You have a beaker with solutes here. This uh, blue circle represents the solute concentration. Is the beaker B solution hypotonic or hypertonic? You know, tonicity is comparison. You cannot say this solution is hypotonic or hypertonic until you compare it with other cells or outside of the cell. So now we have three beakers here. Beaker A, Beaker B, and Beaker C. So now answer this question. Is the Beaker B solution 
hypotonic or hypertonic to the beaker A solution. What do you think? It's hypertonic. That's true. Why? Because when you have a term hypotonic or hypertonic or isotonic, you need to focus on solutes. It has more solute concentration compared to the beaker A. This one has six, this one has two. How about this question? Is the beaker B solution hypotonic or hypertonic to the beaker C solution? Is hypotonic. That's true because the beaker C solution is more concentrated compared to the beaker B solution. So my point is that tonicity is comparison. Now I want to talk about osmosis in animal cells such as red blood cells. So, if you place a red blood cell in a hypotonic solution, that the solution that has less solute, the net flow of water will be into the cell. So, the cell will swell first and then it will burst or light. Now, I want to explain to you why water enters to the uh, cell in hypotonic solutions. There are two ways to answer these questions. First way, because I know the environment of this cell is hypotonic, that means outside of this cell, I have less solute concentration and more water. For inside, and everything is going to be opposite. So I expect to have more solute concentration and less water. Now, the next step, you need to write the water concentration on the figure. Uh, outside, I have more water. Inside, I have less water. So, water enters the cell. The second way, outside, I have 0% NaCl. So, that means the water concentration is 100%. So inside of the cell, I have 0.9% NaCl. I know that the concentration of the solute uh, plus the concentration of the water is going to be 100%. The water concentration is going to be 99.1. If this is red blood cell, outside 100% water, and inside 99.1% water. So which area you have more water, outside or inside? Outside, so water enters to the cell. So you can choose the first way to answer this kind of the questions or if you have concentrations in percentage available, then you can use math and find out which area you have more water. So choose whatever works uh, for you. So this cell condition in hypotonic solution is called lice blood cells. In an isotonic solution, the solution that solute concentrations uh, are the same in and out of the cell, the cell will stay normal an ideal uh, environment for animal cells. Because you have the same CL outside and you have 0.9% NaCl inside. That means you have the same amount of the water in both sides. So the amount of uh, water entering and exiting through the uh, cell membrane is equal. So the net movement of the water molecule is zero in isotonic solutions, but you still have osmosis. The cell condition is called normal for uh, animal red uh, blood cells. Second way, so outside the solute 0.9 percent, so water was 99.1 percent. 
so for inside of the cell everything is going to be the same because you have the same concentration of the NAC and water is going to be 99.1 percent so so if this is red blood cell 99.1 percent you have water inside of the cell and also the same percentage of the water you have outside of the cell so you will have osmosis but the net movement of the water molecules is zero On the other hand, when you place a red blood cell in hypertonic solution, water will uh, leave the cell and the net flow of the water will be out of the cell. As a result, the cell will shrink and uh, the cell condition is called shriveled or crenated. For hypertonic solutions, the first cell so it says outside you have more solute concentrations so that means you have less solvent or water concentrations so everything for inside of the cell is going to be opposite have less solute solutes you know already is the NaCl and more water as you see here you have more water inside of the cell so it would leave the cells so if you want to use math, outside of the cell, we have 1.8% NaCl. Calculate the water percentage. So 100 minus 1.8% is going to be 98.2%. This is the concentration of the water outside of the cell. Inside, you remember it was 0.9% NaCl for water percentage, it was 99.1. Compare these two numbers, which one is smaller outside of the cell? So the next step, I need to write the water concentration on the figure. So 98.2% inside 99.1% water. So water would exceed the cell. And the cell condition is called shriveled or crenated. Now osmosis in plant cells. What would happen to the plant cells placed in hypotonic solution? As you see here, water will flow into the cell like an animal cell. Why do the plant cells stay normal and healthy in hypotonic solution why they don't burst that's true the plant cell has a cell wall that is made of cellulose so excess of water inside of the cell creates the pressure that is called torture pressure that keeps the plants uh, upright and prevent the cell from lysing so it keeps the plant healthy and happy what would happen to the plant cells placed in an isotonic solution so the amount of the water entering and exiting the cell is equal the uh, net movement of the water molecule is almost zero so in an isotonic solution the plant becomes soft or flaccid now what would happen to the plant cells placed in hypertonic solution as you see here the water flew out of the cell so the cytoplasm will shrink so the plant will uh, wilt and eventually will die if we have a plant we just water it with pure water and as you know we don't fertilize the plants every day because it would 
change the plant cells condition, we do it maybe once or twice a year. But we want to keep our plants healthy and upright, so we just water it with pure water. This slide compares osmosis in animal cells with osmosis in plant cells. So when you place both of them in hypotonic solutions, the water enters the cells more. So red blood cells, because they don't have a cell wall, they would burst or lice. But if plant cells stay normal, in an isotonic solution, the net movement of the water is zero, is almost zero, but red blood cells stay normal, and for plant cells, it's called flaccid. And when you place animal cells or plant cells in hypertonic solutions, water leaves the cell. The cell condition in red blood cells is called shriveled or crenated. For plant cells, it's called plasmolites. So I expect you to know this. Terms. In animal cells, uh, we don't have any problems as long as our cells in an isotonic environment. But for those animals that they live uh, either in the hypotonic or hypertonic environment, they must have other adaptation due to lack of cell walls. So, this is Paramecium. It is the protozoa unicellular. It has a, a contractile vacuole and I want to explain what is the function of this vacuole. This permission lives in pond water. This pond water is hypotonic. I hope by now you know hypotonic has less solute and more water. So what do you think? Water enters or exits the cell. Because uh, pond water is hypotonic, it has more water compared to the inside of the cell. So water, H2O, enters to the cell. But this organism doesn't have a cell wall. But why it won't burst? Or why these uh, organisms can't survive with excess of this water? Because you remember animal cells, uh, don't have a cell wall and they lies or how about this organism? This organism is equipped with this contractile vacuole that constantly pumps out excess of water. I would like to encourage you to think about other organisms that live in a hypertonic solution. What kind of the adaptation do they have to live in the surrounding area with the high concentration of solute? Thank you for watching this video.